Let's talk about uh, some types of the small vessel vasculitis. Small vessel vasculitis. This vasculitis the basically depend upon the very important feature you having granuloma or not. If the vasculitis the having granuloma sometimes the granuloma is present or it can be present granuloma maybe here the absent granuloma granuloma present or granuloma absent if the small vessel was a type of small vessel vasculitis the patient with a microscopic microscopic or it's a small level it's a microscope level microscopic poly angiitis microscopic poly ng angiitis and the second type is the church strong syndrome church strong syndrome church strong syndrome the second category and the third type here the small vessel vasculitis the wagner granulomatosis wagner Granulom granulomatosis so Wagner granulomatosis there are three basic category of the small vessel vasculitis and in small vessel vasculitis we have been the CNK CNK and PNK if the feature of the small vessel vasculitis sometimes totally intermixed with pan what is pan is a medium sized vessel vasculitis the full name here the poly arteritis nodosa poly is a more artery poly arteritis arteritis nodosa Polyarteritis nodosa is a medium sized vessel vasculitis. The polyarteritis nodosa, the clinical features of polyarteritis nodosa are quite similar with the, the other features, like these are the features of a small vessel vasculitis. The lab investigation for the polyarteritis nodosa, polyarteritis nodosa, the PNK or CNK, these things are absent, these antibodies are absent. So if your clinical features are, are quite similar to the these small vessel vasculitis, but the absence of P and C and CNK can differentiate it from these small vessel vasculitis. And poly another very difficult feature, these things are absent. The small vessel vasculitis can affect uh, multiple organs and the polyarteritosa also can affect the multiple organs that can affect the all organs of the body except lung lung is the exception here another typical feature in the lung vessels lung vessels not affected by lung vessel lung vessels are spared the lung vessels are spared so lung vessels not affected by polyarteritis so polyarteritis affect liver vessel the skin vessel the muscle vessel the kidney vessel GIT vessel but the lung vessel are the normal the two main features here one thing you have absent the PNK or CNK and another feature here you are not involving the lung vessel if it's not involved the lung vessel or oh, it's a it's a more chances the person may have the polyarthritis nodosa now okay now move on the microscopic polyangiitis but the microscopic polyangiitis in microscopic polyangiitis the granuloma having no granuloma there or granuloma is inflammation of small vessel the granuloma is absent the granuloma is absent and in these two we having granuloma there the granuloma is positive and here we also have the granuloma is positive here so in granuloma also post is vaginal the name of the vaginal is a vaginal granulomatosis so of course 100 percent sure is a granuloma is there the child starts the syndrome and also granuloma positive the child starts the typical feature of child starts okay if you have granuloma if you have asthma feature there along with vasculitis or vasculitis have asthma with asthma 
vasculitis with high level of eosinophil. And this EOC, this, this vasculitis is also known as the eosinophilic vasculitis, so the eosinophilia, the patient having the small vessel, the vessel vasculitis with asthma, eosinophilia, is a very diagnostic for the Turk's drug. But the microscopic poly and microscopic poly in the others, not having granuloma, not the other features. The other features may be same, but the same, same the differentiating point here, eosinophilia and the presence of asthma. Presence of asthma. The Wagner granulomatosis. The Wagner granulomatosis is very special for the respiratory system, the vessels of respiratory system plus vessels of renal system. The respiratory system. Respiratory system, we having upper respiratory tract, we having lower respiratory tract. The upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract, this respiratory tract, this feature, it involves the full respiratory system. The upper respiratory tract, we start from nose, then we have pharynx, then we have trachea, then uh, trachea, oh, oh, sorry, between the trachea and the pharynx here or inner circular legs here. The upper respiratory tract is also involved the nose. The close to nose, we're having four sinuses, they're miserably sinus, atomide sinus, oh, the other four, four paranasal sinuses. So in vaginal granulomatosis, the full respiratory system is affected. The vessels of the patient have the features sinusitis also because sinuses, the sinus, the sinus is also affected by vaginal granulomatosis. And the renal vessel, the renal vessel lead to hematuria. Renal vessel lead to hematuria. And this feature, okay, this feature acquired a very, very typical feature for vaginal granulomatosis. The vaginal granulomatosis have some similarity with, have some similarity, similarity with the good pasture syndrome. What's a good pasture syndrome? The good pasture syndrome is, is autoimmune disease. The good pasture syndrome actually the antibodies form against the basement membrane. The basement membrane, the present, for example, in the lung, is the alveoli here. These are the cells of the alveoli. Here is the basement membrane here. And next we have the cells here, the capillaries surround the alveoli. The alveolar sac, here's the alveolar sac here, this alveolar sac, and this side we're having the endothelial cells, the alveoli cells, alveoli, they're having air here. So this is a basement membrane in the center here, the basement membrane. The basement membrane, the antibody, the antibody come and attack on the basement membrane. They attach with the basement membrane and damage this basement membrane. So one basement membrane here, another basement membrane present in the glomerulus, the efferent artery is the glomerulus here. We're having the Bowman capsule. The before going for Bowman capsule, we have the basement membrane here. Ah, it's a Bowman space. It's a Bowman capsule here. But yes, the red in color here is the basement membrane. It's the basement membrane. Now, in a good pasture center, what's happened? This antibody against basement membrane. Now, this this antibody attack on the basement membrane of the kidney. Attack the basement attack on the basement membrane of the lungs. Now you can see here the respiratory system is affected and also the renal system is also affected. Now feature, the two features, the feature or the clinical clinical feature of Wagner granulomatosis and the good partial syndrome are quite, quite similar. We're quite similar, the, what the main thing here, this respiratory system, this respiratory system is a lower respiratory tract. But if you focus on the respiratory system involved in case of Wagner granulomatosis, the Wagner granulomatosis involves the upper respiratory tract as well as lower respiratory tract. So here we have the feature here, the hemopathysis, the feature one feature hemopathysis, and one feature here hematuria, hemopathysis, hematuria. In addition to hemopathysis, we have one feature related to sinusitis. So sinusitis is a, now is extra feature, additional feature present in Wagner granulomatosis. But this thing is absent in case of good partial syndrome. Why? Because good partial syndrome affecting lower respiratory tract. It's a disease at the level of alveoli. That this patient having hemopathysis, this feature that present here, hemo, uh, this patient having hemopathysis plus hematuria. 
so this the, by clinical feature you can see uh, these two syndrome have to many uh, similar the vagina gonadotosis disease and the good part syndrome have much similarity but the typical thing here you can see the also involvement of upper respiratory tract if you want to go for the lab feature the lab diagnostic the antibody is present against the base membrane and no antibody against the base membrane these are the category of the vasculitis these vasculitis are having the p and k is the nk antibody the present here the nk antibody pnk cnk the present here so this pnk cnk not present in the good posture syndrome another the typical finding another feature another feature uh, also i think similar finding like small vessel vasculitis the disease is known as sv hinox shawling purpura the was a hinox shawling purpura is a hinox Shawling, Hinox Shawling, Purpura. It's a Hinox Shawling Purpura. What's Hinox Shawling Purpura? What's the history of the patient? It's, it's case. It's the case. This history is the history of the patient. This history of patient repeated. Repeated GIT plus rest infection. Repeated GIT plus rest infection. Our defense system we're having antibody IgA. This IgA present on mucosal surfaces. The mucosa of the GIT, the mucosa, the own mucosal surfaces, we're having this IgA for defense. So when the repeated infection, the patient have is repeated infection of GIT, repeated infection of respiratory system. So what happened with the IgA level? This IgA getting high and high and high and high to fight against that repeated repeated infection, the fight against the bacteria, the fight against any microbe try to enter, try to invade the body. This IgA, well now what happened next? This IgA, when you produce a lot of IgA, this IgA now getting in circulation, now get entered to your IgA, so to say, it's IgA, get entered to the circulation. In the circulation, now it can, it can attack on the vessel. The first thing is affected the vessel. No, the problem here, the one enter to blood vessel, this IG attack on vessel. This IG going to kidney, damage kidney. This IG enter the joint, now also damage the joint. This IG, IG damage GIT. Now the patient with the enosual purpura, or the issue here, the again having vasculitis. The vessels involved, the GIT vessels, the vessel, the kidney vessels, and the joint and there, the patient having abdominal pain, abdominal pain, having hematuria, abdominal pain, hematuria, and a joint pain. Abdominal pain, hematuria, and joint pain, the vessels of the skin is also no problem with the vessel skin. What happened on the skin very visible due to vessel damage of the skin, no very visible purpura there. The purpura is a type of one type of hemorrhage. It's like the, if I move a bit bigger size, the pachikia is very small, the purpura is a less than the size of purpura is a less than echimosis and a bit greater than particular hemorrhage the purpura the palpable purpura present over the skin uh, mostly the mostly this purpura present over the lower lane this, so the hinoxual purpura have the same a bit clinical finding abdominal pain and hematuria and these things the muscle pain the skin the hemorrhage under the skin, the, the similar finding like the small vessel vascular, the same clinical feature there. The, the, what's the difference thing here? The different thing here we have in the history of the repeated infection. And if you diagnose this condition clearly, if you want to diagnose both a lab in lab, you can find the IgA. So in anoxical purpura, if you talk about the NK, it's a no NK there. If you talk about the granulomatous inflammation of vessel, it's not granulomatous inflammation. It's just the antibody try to attack on the vessel. That's the IgA. So these are different categories of the small vessel vasculitis. The first one, microscopic polyangiitis, second cherry stars, third one is a Wagner. The three typical findings here. And next we're having here the good partial syndrome. Why I mentioned here good partial syndrome? The good partial syndrome are uh, damage at, at the capillary. It's a disease affecting at the capillary level. It's not a vasculitis. It's damage the basement membrane. But the clinical feature is similar to the Wagner. So that's why we need we need here differentiation from the Wagner. And about the HSP, HSP also have the similar finding, the similar clinical feature related to the other category of the vasculitis. But this this vasculitis is not related with any type of the PNK, CNK. 
And uh, another category here, the HIV patient uh, we're having here. Okay, this is all about the vasculitis lecture. Okay, it's all about small vessel vasculitis. And when the clinical feature, the mixing, the polyarteritis rosa, uh, this, we, this we discussed in the medium size vessel vasculitis. Polyarteritis rosa have typical feature like the microscopic polyangiitis, well stuck. And the main thing here, you must focus here that no NK, no PNK or CNK. And the lung vessel are the fair. That's all about the small vessel vasculitis.